This is five on your side at six, focused on you. An update now to a story we brought you at the top of the five o'clock. Now at six, a truck crashes into a church in St. Charles. Five on your side, the first on scene. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. It happened at the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Church this afternoon near 5th and Jefferson Streets. That's where we find Five on Your Size Annie Crawl live on scene. Annie, what can you tell us? Brent, as you said, we were the first news crew on scene just about 30 minutes after the crash happened and we're the only news crew still this entire afternoon. As you can see behind me, construction crews still slowly but surely making their way through boarding up the side of the building after this church was hit by seemingly a large yellow pickup truck. Police and fire crews out here as well as there was a potential threat of the building collapsing. I spoke with Captain Kelly Hunsell with the St. Charles Fire Department and she told me they made sure the building was safe to enter and eventually patch up with those wood boards for the owners. She told me that the only injury was the driver who was taken to a local hospital for his injuries. As the investigation continues, St. Charles Fire says it looks like the driver was trying to avoid a different potential collision, but then unfortunately ran into the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Chapel. Instead, neighbors in the area were shocked at what they saw and the fire crews were just grateful it wasn't worse. And it's something you don't normally see, you know, a building collapse. And this situation is, you know, it's it's a Saturday, but there was no one in the building at the time of the accident, which is good. You know, this uh, building does house a church, so this could have been a very different situation had this been tomorrow morning or something. Luckily, no one was inside at the time of the accident, just that one injury to the vehicle driver. And just a few moments ago, I was speaking with members of the church. They said they had an open mic last night with about 15 people. But during a typical Sunday service, they can have anywhere between 20, 30, even 40 people. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., they're hosting a virtual Zoom service in light of everything that's happened this afternoon. Reporting live in St. Charles, Annie Crawl, five on your side. And as we learn more about this story, we will update you on air and online. Tune in to Five on Your Side at 10 for the very latest. Right now, part of Main Street in O'Fallon, Missouri is closed after a deadly crash. It happened at Main Street and Ashford Place Drive around 2 o'clock. At least one person is dead. Police did not say how many cars are involved. The victim has not yet been identified. A bill in Illinois could ban the sale of Delta 8. Lawmakers are looking at regulations for hemp products that could also prohibit the sale of products that have synthetic THC, such as Delta 8. That's until they can be studied a bit more. Experts say because there are no regulations on consumer goods with hemp, those products can be made to look like chips and candy and then marketed towards kids. They look like Fritos, right? Um, corn chips. These are corn chips. And the other contains 600 milligrams of Delta-8. I beg to differ, my daughter wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Ingram believes there should be a pause in sales so that a committee of scientists can study the products and make sure they're safe. Well, can a Democrat win a Missouri congressional seat drawn for a Republican? A longtime journalist from St. Louis believes he can. Ray Hartman hopes to challenge Congresswoman Ann Wagner for her seat in Congress. He joins political editor Mark Maxwell on this week's episode of The Record. He says he will be a leader who will listen to the constituents, something he questions if Wagner has done so far. Ann Wagner, in 12 years, has not had a single debate with an opponent, not a single town hall, not a single unscripted public event in the district, ever. I think she views her the district as subjects rather than constituents. I take you to mean that you want her to debate you? Well, sure, of course, anywhere she wants, anytime she wants. Congresswoman Wagner shared a statement with us saying, quote, he has a primary to worry about and he is welcome to debate his primary opponent at any time. You can catch our full conversation with Ray Hartman on this week's episode of The Record. It airs Sunday night, right after Sports Plus. Well, today, hundreds of St. Louisans spent their Saturday helping out those who are in need. Volunteers packing thousands of meals for hungry kids all around the world. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay has the story from West St. Louis County. 
the past four days, this has been the scene from inside the Greensfelder Recreation Complex in Manchester. Just being here with like this huge community and just all helping out for a really, really great cause. It's been it's been special. It's the 18th year that Feed the Need STL has packed food for Feed My Starving Children, a nonprofit dedicated to addressing the issue of world hunger. This food is so important because food is the foundation for all other progress. Carrie Wiggins with Feed My Starving Children says the foundation is even more important than ever. With food insecurity at an all time high across the world and recent events exasperating the problem. Everything that happened over the years during the pandemic created large amounts of food shortages and the amount of conflict that we're seeing in the world today. That's why St. Louisans are stepping up to the challenge. Over 5,000 volunteers helping pack 1.2 million meals over the course of the five day event. We hit a huge milestone this week, have packed the 10 millionth meal that this community has worked with this event over those 18 years. The food that was packed here just on Saturday morning will help feed 362 kids for an entire year. We just really wanted to give back. Among the over 400 volunteers giving back was this group of brownies who helped scoop and pack the food that sent to a network of humanitarian organizations around the world. It's really um, nice it's because you like down deep into your heart, you know that you're doing something really good. A good deed that everyone inside this rec complex knows just begins to scratch the surface. We'll never be able to even the score completely, but just helping out as much as we can is just so important. Everything you do to serve your community is important. Mercedes McKay, five on your side. And people packed a St. Louis County library today to support kids with autism. The Florissant Valley branch hosted a community autism expo this afternoon. Families were connected with area groups to learn about the services and resources that are available. The event organizer says he wanted to do something to help people like him. Being an adult with a late autism diagnosis at age 37, uh, a year after I received an autism diagnosis, I wanted to do something proactive with my life. I didn't want anyone to have to struggle, especially a young person following um, in my footsteps. St. Louis County libraries have resources on site. At every branch, you can find sensory bags for kids. Just ask a library employee. Picking where your kids go to school, the latest effort for educational reform in Missouri, and raising money and awareness for Down syndrome, the event in Cottleville today.